following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up. Is there more to life than what I'm seeing? A top PhD in search of knowledge. I took the path of science because this is what the social context was showing me. Five continents across seven years. The more I studied, the more I could not get to the knowledge of the truth. What did he see? I was cursing the dead for wanting to be in their place. And where did he find the truth? I felt like an electric shock going through my heart. On today's 700 Club. Welcome, folks, to this edition of the 700 Club. This is the day the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So I hope you find this a happy program and good stuff for you. But I want to say the pressure on the president and Congress to act quickly on police reform is more intense than ever. The killing of a black man by Atlanta police sparked new protests and more violence over the weekend. What police reforms are on the table to bring peace? And what's the poison pill that could stop them? Gary Lane has that. The death of Rayshard Brooks has been ruled a homicide. The police shooting was captured in dramatic video outside the Wendy's restaurant, where Brooks had failed several sobriety tests and then tried to run from police. He resisted arrest and fled after seizing a police taser. An officer shot and killed him as he fled pointing the taser in their direction. Brooks' wife says he wasn't dangerous. I didn't know that I was going to wake up to my husband never coming home. Protesters set fire to the Wendy's. Atlanta Police Chief Erica Shields resigned in the wake of the shooting. Police officer Garrett Rolfe was fired, and another officer was suspended. The Atlanta shooting gives a renewed sense of urgency to police reform legislation. Both Congress and the president are expected to act this week. Democrats are pushing to end qualified immunity, which shields officers like Rolf from civil lawsuits. We have to ask ourselves as a society, do we want to have a nation where police officers who do really awful things cannot be held accountable uh, 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 to, to civil rights charges? But the president and other Republicans say qualified immunity is off the table. Senator Tim Scott calling it a poison pill that will kill police reform legislation. That sends a wrong signal, perhaps the worst signal, right now in America. Scott has been working on police reform for five years. Republicans have tasked him with drafting a proposal in the Senate. Key points are improved officer training and greater transparency when wrongdoing occurs. Also, Scott and others support banning chokeholds. That is one of the things that we should have engaged in a long time ago. Many departments around the country have already banned uh, chokeholds, and I think a lot of other departments are increasing that now. President Trump expected to sign an executive order this week setting a national standard for police. He agrees chokeholds should be banned except in certain situations. But if a police officer is in a bad scuffle and he's got somebody well, in a Well, if it's a one-on-one -on -one fight for the life. Yeah, and that's that does happen. And that does happen. But too. So you have to be careful. With that being said, it would be, I think, a very good thing that, generally speaking, it should be ended. Ben Carson, Trump's only black cabinet member, says it's time for Americans to come together and calmly share their multiple perspectives. We have to stop you know, putting everything into the arena of combat. And let's see if, if we can find a way to work together, because if we don't, we're doomed. And some rays of hope, healing, and grace, amazing grace, shared over the weekend in Nashville. These Christians took to song outside a nightclub recently looted by rioters. Gary Lane, CBN News. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to come together and recognize, you know, like it or not, we're all one race, really. Um, we, we're all descended from Adam and Eve. And, you know, so there's a little bit of pigmentation different, a little bit of facial characteristics different. But at the same time, We've got to be careful we don't go overboard. We can't allow one group to take over a whole block of a city and, and declare it an independent zone. We can't allow one group to say we're going to take away the police and defund them. We, we can't just have a lawless nation. 
And, you know, I ask our staff to give us a breakdown of, of the population by race in this country. And uh, here's what they found. 60% of the American people are considered white. That would include uh, uh, many of the Middle Eastern people. 18% are Hispanic uh, or Latino. The blacks only make up 13.4%, and Asians are 5.9%. So if we're going to look after people, we've also got to look after the Hispanics. They are a larger proportion of our people than blacks are. And Asians are almost half as many, uh, and we need to look after them. So we can't just give all the law and all the uh, appointments and all the attention uh, to the, uh, the, the one uh, segment of our population. 13.4%. Now, I'm pleased to report at Regent University, our population, 23% of our students are African American. And I'm just delighted because they're wonderful people and they're achieving a great deal and they're our Christian brothers and sisters. And that's what we need to do is recognize these are our brothers and sisters. But so are the Latinos, so are the Hispanics. So are our Asian friends. And we've got to remember, as a nation, we can't just tilt everything in, in relation to one particular uh, interest group and to the exclusion of others. We have to look after all of us. It's, it's all the people. And I just think it's very important to, to recognize that one group shouldn't uh, mistreat another. And we've got to deal with this matter of police brutality. We've got to do it. Well, CBN Chief Political Analyst David Brody joins us now. And David, uh, given the latest incident on the death of uh, Floyd, what needs to be done in Washington, do you think, to move this thing forward? Well, I think there's, there's a compromise to be reached. And the, and the reason, Pat, for that is that both sides want it. Our Republicans want something done. Democrats do, too. And this president needs to get something done uh, with all of the, uh, the, the chorus in this country uh, clamoring for something to get done. So, so usually what happens here in Washington is that uh, when there's a will to get it done, there's somehow a way to get it done. And, and I think you'll see somehow some compromise. When I say compromise, I'm talking about some sort of agreement, middle ground on chokeholds as to what both parties uh, feel they can come to an agreement uh, about. Uh, but beyond chokeholds, uh, you know, you're looking at uh, there's a lot of other issues as it relates to uh, potential uh, no-knock raids and, and, and many other things, speci specifically whether or not police should get immunity from prosecution on certain issues. And th there's a lot to be dealt with. Uh, but I will just say that I think with Donald Trump, uh, you know, the way he has handled all of this, I think, uh, comes into question here as it relates to he calls himself the law and order president. Uh, but, you know, there is a balance between law and order in the Bible, Romans 13, 1, obey authorities and all of that. And then, of course, compassion in the Bible, a central theme uh, of the Bible. And I think for Donald Trump, it's always been a struggle for him to get that right balance. He's, he's got the law and order part down right. He can work a little bit on the compassion side of it, too. Well, the president is restarting a campaign in Tulsa. And Tulsa, I understand, was the scene of an absolutely horrible massacre of black people um, uh, back in the 1920s or so. You want to talk about that? Well, that's right, you, Juneteenth. And he decided to move that for it was supposed to be June 19th. He's moved it one day later to June 20th and a smart move. The media saying he he caved in. But, you know, caved or not caved, the bottom line is he, he did the right thing uh, by moving it to June 20th. I think the bigger issue now becomes you're going to have this in an indoor arena uh, with potentially 19,000, 20,000 or so folks. And now uh, the coronavirus uh, police, if you will, are out in force saying, well, wait a minute. Uh, you know, what about spreading the coronavirus around? Well, we've seen with the George Floyd protest and, and other protests all over the country that uh, social distancing hasn't been used at all. But now the media is saying, well, hey, wait a minute, this is indoors, so it's different. 
than outdoors, and this is what you're going to get. So Trump's got to deal with the media on this, too, but uh, he also has to deal with Joe Biden. And, uh, you know, Joe Biden pretty much has a basement strategy here. And what I mean by that is slow as he goes. In other words, keep him in the basement for the most part and trot him out when you need to. Don't make too many mistakes. That's what Joe Biden's campaign is pretty much thinking, you know, because Joe Biden has three opponents, right? I mean, he's got to take on Donald Trump. He's got to take on the far left in his party. He's got to take on himself. He's a human guy machine. And so he, he's got some issues, too. And, and that's 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 where he's at. You remember, years ago, he was, uh, you know, accused of uh, plagiarizing Neil Kinnock's uh, speeches. And uh, he was pretty much taken out of politics. Now he's had a, a great resurgence. Who's on his short list for uh, VP? It looks like he's going to pick a black woman. It's talking about Kamala Harris now as, as the top of the list. Who do you think? Yeah, I came out a few weeks ago and said Kamala Harris, I, I think, will most likely be the pick. I mean, you never know exactly, but I think she fits the moment right now, especially after George Floyd. Uh, but there's a lot more to Kamala Harris. She's been vetted to a degree, not fully, but she's been vetted because she ran for president. So there's some of that, which is a good thing for the Biden campaign. Uh, in, in addition, she is a former attorney general, so she has somewhat of a, a law and order card to play if, if he needs to. Uh, and she is obviously an African-American woman woman, which will help on the far left side uh, of that problem that we just talked about for Biden. Uh, some others, uh, potentially uh, Susan Rice, uh, the former national security advisor. You've got Val Demings. You've got Keisha Lance Bottoms down in Atlanta, the mayor there who had that uh, rousing speech uh, after the riots in Atlanta uh, a few weeks ago. So uh, there are some possibilities, but I, I think it's probably Kamala Harris. Susan Rice is as a potential as well. But um, We'll see. I can tell you this, Pat, uh, from uh, from Biden's perspective, he would be smart to take a page from the Obama playbook. You know, in 2008, uh, President Obama spoke with CBN News four times, uh, and or Barack Obama, the candidate, spoke with CBN News four times. He ended up winning 26 percent of the white evangelical vote in 2008. In 2012, he got 21 percent of that vote. Hillary Clinton only got 16 percent of the white evangelical vote. In other words, the Trump base. And why? Well, she decided not to talk about her faith and not play to the audience. Look, the truth of the matter is, we know, Pat, and you know, elections are won at the margins. And if Joe Biden can pick off a percentage or two of white evangelicals that are frustrated with Trump and want and he wants to appeal to their better angels and more compassion, it's there for the taking. But he has to engage. And I think that's something we'll watch here at CBN. Well, David, thank you so much for that analysis. And we will look eagerly at it. Uh, OK, well, in other news, uh, Tulsa's top health official is calling on the president to postpone his rally. Ephraim Grimm has more on that. Thank Pat, you. Pat, the city's health department director warns this week's rally is risky and could cause a surge in COVID-19 cases. But Oklahoma Senator Republican James Langford says it will be safe and he intends to go. The Trump administration is asking attendees to sign a waiver promising not to sue if they do get the virus. About 19,000 are expected to attend. This comes as 22 states are seeing an increase in new coronavirus cases. Arizona and Texas set new records for hospitalizations. And two states, Utah and Oregon, are now slowing their reopening process. Israel is moving ahead with a new Jewish community in the Golan Heights named after President Donald Trump. It will be called Ramat Trump, which is Hebrew for Trump Heights, and it will be home to 300 families. Israel recaptured the Golan Heights from Syria in the 1967 Six-Day War. Most of the international community considers it to be occupied by Israel, but the Trump administration said in March of last year the U.S. recognized it as under Israeli sovereignty. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu confirmed the move Sunday, the president's 74th birthday. Pat? Well, it's a nice birthday president, uh, president I should say. Um, you know, let's face it. The two-state solution is not going to work as long as there's one factor that denies the legitimacy of the other one and so the, the other one should be eliminated, and that's the position of the Palestinian Authority. So uh, uh, that's part of Eretz Israel, the land of Israel, and the West Bank, is, if you, it's Judea and Samaria, it's one of the, home, the homelands of Israel. and. They're going to, but the Golan Heights, particularly, I mean, that, that's 
that shouldn't be even under discussion yeah. as anybody else. I mean, the, the, the Israelis fought one of the great tank battles in the history of warfare mm -hmm. to take the Golan, and they certainly shouldn't give it back. Terry? Well, coming up, is police brutality actually protected under law? Hear about the little-known doctrine that has shielded policemen from persecution or prosecution and see why police officers themselves want it overturned. And then later, the greatest power in the world. One scientist looked high and low for it. What did he discover? You'll see later on today's show. Would you believe it? Even in the most outrageous cases of abuse, what if police come in, they uh, uh, attack somebody, seize his money, and hold it? Well, even under those circumstances, it's extremely difficult to criminally prosecute the police. And it's nearly impossible to recover damages when civil rights are violated. Why? Because of two words, qualified immunity. John Jessup explains. Anger over the haunting images of the death of George Floyd sparked a worldwide movement. Got all four. Yeah, got all four. But there's another movement, though little known, gaining traction marked not by images, but by two words many have never heard. Qualified immunity. If I understand correctly, it effectively acts as a shield. That's exactly right. And that's why we call qualified immunity an unlawful shield, because it, it is a shield for public officials who have committed constitutional violations to escape accountability for their actions. When police use excessive force that may violate a person's rights, that person can try to recover damages by claiming a violation of civil rights. But increasingly, those claims are not even given their day in court because of the doctrine of qualified immunity and its widespread application in civil cases seeking police accountability. The law's origin comes from the Enforcement Act of 1871, designed to protect recently freed slaves after the Civil War. Over the years, a section of the law protecting public officials in the course of their work evolved into today's version of qualified immunity, a doctrine created by the Supreme Court. It essentially provides a shield of liability against civil lawsuits so long as the public official's conduct does not violate clearly established law. The way it works in practice is that courts will require would-be civil rights plaintiffs to find a prior case already decided in their jurisdiction where someone else's rights were violated in essentially the same way. And given no two cases are exactly the same. Qualified immunity routinely enables public officials, especially members of law enforcement, to get away with egregious misconduct just because they happen to be the first ones to commit that exact kind of misconduct. For example, after being cleared of any wrongdoing, a Cleveland man filed a lawsuit alleging he was punched in the neck and jailed by police who never identified themselves but suspected he was breaking into his own apartment. A judge ruled because of qualified immunity, neither the police nor the city could be sued. And an appeals court last year ruled two California police officers who allegedly stole over $220,000 while executing a warrant also couldn't be sued simply because there's no legal precedent in that part of California. What should happen when a Schweikert isn't the only one drawing attention to the legal challenge. Last month, a Reuters investigation reviewed some 500 cases over 15 years and found a trend. Courts denying victims the right to challenge violations of their constitutional rights, making it harder to win future cases against the police. In speaking with law enforcement, I found a willingness to reconsider the unintended effects of qualified immunity, followed by a hesitation to end the principle seen as essential so police can carry out their daily duties without the constant fear of lawsuits. Captain Sonia Pruitt has served nearly 30 years with the Montgomery County, Maryland Police Department. 
Black officers play a really vital role in policing. It is a noble profession. As the head of the National Black Police Association, she says it's time to re-examine qualified immunity for law enforcement. We would ask that any of the parameters surrounding qualified immunity be examined because it could be a way for officers to uh, feel like that they will get more leniency if they commit an act a violation of misconduct in the line of duty. Schweikert believes it not only thwarts justice, but works against the very men and women it's designed to protect. I think that this doctrine is doing a tremendous disservice to members of law enforcement because it is depriving them of the public trust and credibility that they need to do their job safely and effectively. And momentum for change is building. Among protesters honoring George Floyd, both liberal and conservative justices saying it's time to review the court's own solidified principle, and lawmakers introducing legislation to revoke the provision for gun-carrying officers in an effort to combat excessive force and police brutality. It's a rare issue of consensus across ideological lines seen recently on criminal justice reform. Nicole Porter witnessed the power of the faith community when she worked to advance the First Step Act. In my work at the state level, faith communities are key in representing a base of constituents who are supportive of criminal justice reform and talking about restorative justice and other alternatives of punishment. Many agree among the ways to honor George Floyd is to fix the broken system before it gets worse. My hope is that if you know, we are able to address that now and make a simple but massive change uh, to eliminate this doctrine. You know, I hope that that will offer some small measure of redemption for the death of George Floyd and so many other people like him. What's his name? George Floyd! John Jessup, CBN News, Washington. John, well, that's just one more thing that's got to be fixed. And hopefully we're able to handle it before this country erupts into something that was very, very unpleasant. Terry? Well, up next, he's studied with NASA and been featured inside the pages of National Geographic. Where did this top scientist find the answers in his quest for the truth? And then later, Pat weighs in on the issues that matter to you. One writer, or one viewer writes, recently my wife stated that she's still in love with her ex-lover. And she now believes God's giving her permission to choose him. How should I pray? What will Pat say to that? We'll be back. Now more than ever, the world needs the truth of Jesus. And today you can be one of the first to get Jesus of Nazareth, the first episode in CBN Films' newest documentary series, Written in Stone. The film uncovers the historical proof and archeological evidence that affirms the truth. Jesus is exactly who the Bible says he is. Get your exclusive copy of the DVD today with instant streaming access on the CBN Family app. It's yours for a gift of any dollar amount. Visit cbn.com slash written in stone or call 1-800-700-7000. And you can also text STONE to 51555. But you want to get a hold of your copy. It's the beginning of amazing series, and you're going to love this. They really will. It's fascinating. You want your copy. Well, from tropical paradises to frozen wastelands, the top scientist named Dragos traveled across five continents. What is he looking for? The truth. But Dragos never find it. Then one night, he was walking through a graveyard, longing to die. And so what saved him from suicide? You're about to find out. I kept asking the question, is there more to life than what I'm seeing? Is there more to life than what the social environment is teaching me? How can I find more meaning, more purpose in my life, in my existence? Dr. Dragos Bratasanu grew up in Romania in the years after the fall of communism. Although he was drawn to various world religions, Christianity was not one of them. I saw people going through the motions of bowing down to the bones of the dead, of going up to light candles for Easter or Christmas, or growing up with the belief that you have to go through the priest if you want to go to the living God. But because of that, 
Because of the religious environment I grew up in, I simply refused to have anything to do with Christianity. Instead, Dragos worshipped knowledge and education. While living in Germany, he received a PhD in satellite-based intelligence studies. I took the path of science, the path of engineering, because this is what the social context was showing me. You have to get a job, cling on to it as hard as possible for as many years as possible. And if you've made it all the way into retirement, you're successful. Dragos excelled in his career and received worldwide acclaim. He studied with NASA and was even featured in National Geographic magazine, but he still was empty inside. I investigated every or almost every spiritual tradition around the world. Because I had put Christianity on the side, I did not want to read the black book with the cross on the cover. His journey took him from the frozen ice caps of the Arctic to the deepest jungles of the Amazon. Across five continents, Dragos searched. So I had spent about seven years um, researching, practicing, meditating, studying all these spiritual traditions. However, the more I studied, the more I could not get to the knowledge of the truth. Almost every area of my life crumbled. My relationship ended. After six years, uh, my startup company didn't work as I was hoping it would work. And it ended up with me in my parents' apartment in depression and such wretched pain. His despair even brought him to the brink of suicide. It got so bad that I was walking past graveyards as I was coming back from work and I was cursing the dead for wanting to be in their place. One evening at his parents' apartment, Dragos decided to pray. The pain was so intense, I just took my pillow and I cried out to God from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of my being. I said, God, if you're real, I need you. You have to come to me because I just cannot do this anymore. Shortly after, he called a friend in Hawaii. I flew to Hawaii and this friend of mine, who wasn't even a Christian, he doesn't believe in the Bible, he said to me, if you, if you have the chance to read something by Catherine Kuhlman, uh, just find the book and read, maybe it will help. I go online. The first book that showed up was called The Greatest Power in the World. I flipped through the, through the pages of this book and as I read the last row of the foreword that said, if you have not made that full surrender to Jesus Christ, do it now. When my eyes finished reading the sentence, the sentence, I, I felt like an electric shock going through my heart, or as if I was struck by lightning, my knees buckled, I dropped the book in the sink, and I almost went down on the floor. When I got up, a second later, I was instantly healed of all guilt, shame, depression, and not only that, but in that moment, I knew that I knew that I knew that Jesus Christ is the truth. I had no mental understanding whatsoever about what this means, but I knew beyond any doubt that Jesus Christ is the truth. Dragos then received water baptism. For four months then, I repented of everything I had ever done. And the more I was repenting, the more I was opening up to the Heavenly Father, the more love he poured into me. Today, Dragos wants to show the world through his writing and speaking that science and faith need not be incompatible. The scientific communities have spent more than 40 years looking into near-death experiences. And after studying thousands and thousands of testimonies of near-death accounts, some of the best scientists in the world have come to the understanding and the knowledge that there is an afterlife and heaven and hell are real places. He also says he no longer worships knowledge, but instead, the source of all knowledge, the one who has given his life meaning. The only thing that has purpose for me in this world right now is for him to be pleased with me. All I care is that the one who saved me when I was on the edge of the grave, when I was struggling in despair, he reached down from heaven, he grabbed me, 
from near death, he put me on the rock, he gave me a new life of hope, of love, of power. Now all I care is for him to be pleased with me. Jesus Christ for me is the beginning and the end, the Alpha, the Omega, the meaning, the purpose and the life. What a testimony of somebody who searched and searched. You know, the Bible says that uh, you don't have to ascend up into heaven and you have to go down to hell, but the Word is nigh you. The Word is the God is on your lips and on your heart. And Drago's found it. He, he found it when he finally began to say, my life doesn't have any meaning. And I would say to somebody, you could talk to the Lord and say, Lord, if you are, you know, wherever you are, come unto me and I will serve you. Reveal yourself to me. And God will do that. And God revealed himself to Drago and he'll do the same thing for you. Are you searching? You know, there's a, a sickness in people's hearts. And the St. Augustine said, our hearts are restless till they have rest in thee. And people have been searching, searching, searching. Is there life after death? Does, is heaven real? Is hell real? Uh, is there a supernatural being that controls the movement of the planets and, and the action of all the universe? Is there a creator? All that. But I tell you, if you seek the Lord, you will find him, the Bible says, when you seek for him with all your heart. And if you want to know God, he's no farther away than breathing. He's nearer than hands and feet. And all he says to you is, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You will find peace in your soul. Come unto me, all you livers. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Would you like to know the author of life? If you would, I want you to pray with me real quickly. We're not going to spend a lot of time, but God can hear the cry of your heart. And as you talk to the Lord, He will hear and answer. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, that's right. Pray these words, Lord Jesus. I need you. I've been looking, Lord, and my heart is empty. I want to know the living God. Please hear my cry. Come into my heart. Live your life in me. And from this moment on, I will serve you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now, I want to pray for you, Father, for those who prayed with me just then. May the power of God come upon them. May they know your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed with me, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe him in your heart that God has raised you from the dead, you'll be saved. Now, I want you to confess with it. There's somebody at the telephone right now, and what I want you to do is to call right now and say, look, I prayed with Pat. I gave my heart to the Lord. 1-800-700-7000. And I want to send you a little thing called A New Day. It's got a CD in it or a compact disc, and it's got a little booklet, and I'll give this to you free. But I want you to call. You say, I prayed with Pat. I gave my heart to the Lord. one 800 707,000. And the Bible says the angels of heaven are rejoiced over one sinner that, that uh, finds the Lord. Over one sinner that's saved. Angels of heaven are rejoicing on the decision you just made. Quickly call in right now. 1-800-707,000. Terry? Well, still ahead, no stopping her now. What turned a former shut-in into a social butterfly? And how did it happen in an instant? Stay tuned to find out.
And up next, another round of your questions with some honest answers. Beth writes, I am so scared of getting sick with a horrible illness. How do you think we can protect ourselves? That's going to tackle that and more, so don't go away. And welcome back to the 700 Club for this CBN News Break. The Department of Health and Human Services overturned an Obamacare rule that included transgender individuals under sex discrimination. The new rule applies sex discrimination protections based on whether they are biologically male or female, not on how they define their own sexuality. LGBTQ groups say explicit protections are needed for people seeking sex reassignment treatment and transgender people. Conservatives say the Obama administration exceeded its legal authority in broadly interpreting gender. CBN is gathering with its international directors from across the world to pray during the COVID-19 crisis. Host Jessica Datsko went live on Instagram for a Life Changers series called Pandemic Prayers. These programs feature directors from Africa, Europe, Asia, Canada, Latin America, and other guests. Life Changers is a weekly television program that introduces viewers to people from around the world who, are dedic who have dedicated their lives to serving others and to spreading the message of God's love. You can learn more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to cbn.com international. Pat and Terry are back with more of today's 700 Club coming up right after this. Well, it's time to look at some real questions and offer you some honest answers. Pat, this first one comes from Charles, who says, My wife and I have been married 25 plus years. We have two children and are strong Christians. Recently, my wife stated that she is still in love with an ex-lover. She had relationships with him before we were married and a fling halfway through our marriage. She said she's been praying for years for God to break the soul tie, but he hasn't. She now believes God is speaking to her and giving her permission to choose him. I'm looking for your guidance on how I should pray. <laughs> well, I, I think uh, what you have got there is uh, clearly a breaking of your marriage ties. And this idea that he's a soulmate and all this kind of stuff is just baloney. She has made a vow to you. She's supposed to be your, your wife. You're supposed to be her husband. You're supposed to love, honor, and protect until death do you part and all the rest of it. She's breaking those vows, and she's committing adultery, and uh, she wants, I don't know, what you, how, do, how do you pray? Well, I think you're asking for my advice, and uh, the prayer would be rather easy, but uh, it seems like to me what you ought to do is to say, dear, uh, I, I sever the bonds that are holding you, and I release you uh, for your own folly, and you, 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 you're off on your own, and get on with your life. That's what I would tell you to do, all right? Wow. Now, this is Pam, who says, Hi, Pat. I watch your show almost every day, and I am a CBN partner. I understand that God wants me to only worship Him, read His Word, tithe, follow the Ten Commandments, and love each other deeply. I hear people judging each other every day. People are on the right. People are on the left. Do we need to get back to Bible basics, or am I missing something? Didn't God say in Matthew 5 that the meek will inherit the earth? Well, um, I don't know how that... Meek and here at the earth, I, meek means you're under control, and, and those that are under control will inherit the earth. But uh, if you do not forgive others, your heavenly Father will not forgive you. That's what the Bible says. And if you want to be forgiven, you have to be uh, able to forgive others. And people are holding grudges, and there is animosity and hatred and bitterness and the Bible says a house divided against itself can't stand. And I say it over and over and over again. It's a simple truth. But a kingdom divided against itself can't stand. A family can't stand if it's divided. And we have to have unity as a people. And that unity is being torn apart. And there has to be a sense of forgiveness. So I, I don't know what, what you're asking me, except uh, we cannot have bitterness in the church and expect God to bless us, all right? 
This is Beth who says, hi, Pat. My doctor made a comment to me saying, quote, it's not if you will get cancer, it's when. I'm so scared of getting sick with a horrible illness like that. I'm trying to live healthy. How do you think we can protect ourselves? Well, the idea of a doctor saying that is yeah. not a question of happening. That's nonsense. That guy will have his license taken away from him. You're not necessarily going to get cancer. But if you do, how do you protect yourself? Well, we've talked so much about uh, immunity and the gut health, but I do believe that probiotics and prebiotics, we have a little booklet that we've been, it was very popular, told how to build a better gut. And about, uh, well, probably 80% or more of your immune system is located in your gut, where you have these friendly little bacteria that will keep you healthy, and, and it's like the second brain. So I'll give you this free if you want it. And, uh, but uh, I don't know. You know, I'm a cancer survivor, but uh, I, I, when I found out I had it, I had it cut out. My wife is a, and she's had breast cancer, and she had it removed, and, and she's still 30 years afterwards. So. I know many people as well who have well survived cancer. Right? Absolutely. I mean, it's not a death sentence, okay? Okay, this is Patrick who says, Dear Pat, I love CBN, have been a partner for years, and learned tithing from you. I have a serious amount of credit card debt to pay off. If I tithe first on my income, it's going to take me about five years to pay that off because the interest keeps adding on. Would it be okay to tithe less first, pay off the debt faster, and then give more later on instead of constantly having to live under the burden of debt? <laughs> well, it's between you and the Lord, but I tell you, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. And I believe that if you put yourself in a, in a position of blessing, as you give unto the Lord, when you, you give unto the Lord, you, you put with it a prayer that, God, I'm, I'm entrusting this into your hands, and I speak blessings over this amount of money, and God will multiply 30, 60, and 100 fold, and He'll do it so fast you won't believe it, all right? Mm -hmm. and believing it, trusting uh, it. Trusting it all the way through. Yep. Expect mm -hmm. something. But when it leaves your hand and gets into the hands of God, then the multiplication takes place. And it's 30, 60, and 100 fold times, not percent times. All right? Well, thanks for your questions, everybody. We love hearing from you. And we're going to move on now with a story from the Philippines. When the coronavirus hit, the Philippines went on lockdown. For day laborers there, that meant no work, no food. With six children, Alma and her husband wondered how long could they last, but not anymore. And here's why. Alma is a street vendor. As COVID-19 hit her city in the Philippines, she worried where the family's next meal would come from. Alma and her husband work as day laborers. If they don't work, there's no money to buy food that evening or the next day. And they haven't been able to work since the nationwide lockdown began. We lost their livelihood. I have six kids, and I didn't know how long we'd be able to last. Just next door is Alma's neighbor, Arlie. She's also a day laborer. The quarantine meant she was out of work too. We had no other source of income to buy food. My relatives are in the same situation as we are. So I just hold on to God. It's really tough, but I'm choosing to trust in Him. When Operation Blessing learned about Alma and Arlie, we provided them with food packs, including rice, milk, canned goods, and clean drinking water. We also gave them cleaning supplies to help prevent the spread of the virus. We're so happy because we didn't expect to get help from people who don't even know us. God really answers prayers. My kids were so excited because they had so much food to eat. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. That's Operation Blessing hard at work around the world and also right here at home. If you'd like to be a part of making a difference, call our toll-free number. It's 1-800-707-1000, cents a day, $20 a month, makes you a 700 Club member. That means all of what you just saw will happen because you cared enough to make a difference. 
I want to send you a thank you if you're joining today. It's called Do You Need a Miracle? This is filled with stories of people who've had God at work in their lives today. We want you to be encouraged by that. So will you call now 1-800-700-7000? Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. Still ahead, jumping for joy after two failed knee surgeries. What healed this woman? Stay tuned to find out. Plus, we'll be praying for you, so don't go away. Benzetta was a prisoner in her own home, and that was before the quarantine. Two failed knee surgeries had crippled her with pain. There was still one thing she could do. What was it, and how did it help her get healed? Take a look. In 2015, I was unable to walk. I was actually dragging my leg. I couldn't bend my leg. I could only just extend my leg straight out. I was unable to sit. I sought a doctor. And when I did, I went and had the surgery, a total knee replacement. And because I had waited so long to have the surgery, they had to do some extensive knee replacement. After my first knee surgery, the pain returned. Then I had to have another revision surgery. About 15 days later, the pain was, it was back. I, I didn't understand it. It made me feel depressed. I felt hopeless because I was a very active person. I was very lively. I loved to go. I traveled. I did a lot of things. And now I couldn't, I was captive in my own house. All I did was watch TV. That's when I started watching the 700 Club. It gave me hope. On June the 21st, 2019, I was watching the 700 Club. And about 10 minutes before the show ends, Gordon, he was getting ready to pray. And by his stripes, you are healed. So Wendy and I are going to agree with you. All you need to do is touch. And I had already been praying. And I told God, that if you're the same God, that the woman with the issue of the blood said, if I could just touch the hem of your garment, <laughs> then I want you to prove to me that you can do the same for me. Gordon <laughs> said to lay your hands on your knees. Someone else, you have tendons out of place in your left knee and God is putting them back into place, taking all that swelling, all that pain, all that discomfort away from you right now. In Jesus' name, be healed, be made whole. And I just started jumping and I just started praising God. And I said, that's me, that's me, that's me. The pain was gone instant. And I was just, I was astonished. I can move my leg. You hear me? My leg's not popping or nothing. I'm telling you, I know that he did it for me. An old rich like me, that undeserving. That's what I'm talking about. When you know you're undeserving, whew, <laughs> you better serve God, the God that I serve. I'm ready to go now. My home is not a prison anymore. I love being a greeter at my church, being able to be physically able to stand and welcome people into the house of God and showing them that God loves them. I love going out to eat and shopping with my best friend and I'm all, you have to go in and out of the stores and I used to dread that because it was so much walking. And now I look forward to that because I'm not in any pain. God still performs miracles. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a healer. I know that to be true today. I know it. What a marvelous testimony. Here's the one that came in. Tony, who lived in Laurel, Maryland, learned to live with constant excessive stomach acid. While watching this program, Terry said someone with extreme stomach acid, God's healing you. And Tony said, that's for me. 
He took it, ran with it. Tony Joyce reports that since then he's had no further aid. Pat, this is Joyce. She had night sweats and fever due to a virus, and she prayed on the club a week ago. Before that day, she'd been bothered every day, hadn't gone to see a doctor yet, but today she said, I just realized it's been over a week since I've had night sweats or a fever. Glory to God, I'm receiving my healing. Well, we want to pray for you right now. We were running out of time. We've got about a minute and a half. So pray with us at this point. Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. A woman, I believe, named Margarita, you've got um, you've got uh, lumps in your in your uh, left breast, and it's it's kind of like it's open cancer or something. God has just healed you. Just touch it in the name of Jesus. is completely whole. Terry? Yes, someone, you've been diagnosed with a muscle disease that has just left you feeling so weak, like you can, you can hardly do anything. God's healing that for you right now. You're going to have your health completely restored to you. In Jesus' name, be made whole. There's a right hip. The hip, hip has been, uh, uh, you know, the bone is uh, deteriorating and you're in great pain. Uh, you've had to walk with a walker, or, and, and right now, if, if you just touch that hip in the name of Jesus, touch. Yes. Yes, Praise the Lord. Else. You have yes. uh, sores throughout your mouth, but especially on your tongue, so Thank painful you. you can hardly eat anything. God's healing that condition for you. It's going to just go away in Jesus' Praise name. God. Amen. Let us hear from you. That's all the time we've got, but thank you so much. We'd love to hear from you. Pick up the phone, call in, give us the testimony. We'd love to share it. Well, our power minute comes from 2 Peter. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. From Terry and all of us, this is Pat Robertson, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.